Whether you're creating notes, to-do lists, the next great web page, or a software development masterpiece, Sublime Text is a very powerful and capable text editor for getting your editing tasks completed. And when it comes to that latter item there, software development, I've received a lot of questions recently about how you use GCC and G++, the MinGW compilers, on Windows. So today's video, we're going to cover how to do that very thing. <music> Hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odan Nerd here. Welcome back to another Sublime Text tutorial video where the topic of this week's lesson is using GCC, the GNU Compiler Collection, to compile C and C++ programs in Sublime Text. Now, there's a few different ways that we can be doing this. If you're on Linux, well, good news, Linux distributions generally uh, have compiler tools already installed, so you don't really have to do anything in that regard, and you're mostly good to go right out of the box on Linux. If you're a macOS user, well, you don't have a compiler installed by default, generally, at least for the versions of macOS that I've uh, ever used, but it's very easy to install them by using Xcode. It has command line tools that will work with Sublime with uh, little to no setup. I don't remember having to set anything up, and there's probably other ways to install those as well, but what we're going to be covering here in the video today is Windows users, because Windows doesn't come with a compiler collection, but the MinGW, the minimalist GNU for Windows system, is a port of the GCC compiler suite to Windows, which allows you to use the same tools on Windows as you would on Linux for creating software. So the topic of this week's video is going to be how to install MinGW, how to get it set up to make sure that Sublime can see it, and then how to execute programs of a C and C++ type variety from directly within Sublime Text itself. The first thing we're going to have to do is install MinGW. I haven't done that yet. We're going to do that right now. If you've already installed this, then you don't have to do this step. You can skip to step two, and the time code for that is down in the description and should also, if I remembered, be uh, on the screen right now as well. Now, you're going to need to know if you have already installed MinGW where you actually installed it. That's probably the default location. So if you're not sure, keep watching. You'll see what that default location actually is. But uh, in order to do this, we're going to go ahead and jump over to the browser where we are at mingw.org, home of the uh, the project as well. And there's a tab right up here in the top right of the page labeled Downloads. We're going to click that, and it's going to take us to osdn.net and the official download for this, where if we scroll down a little bit down here, we can see there is a link to mingw get setup. So we're going to click that to download it, and um, it should be downloading now. There it goes, and it is already done. Now, this is one of those installers where when you run it, it is the installer that downloads and gets the installers and runs for the tools that you actually want to install. So we're going to go ahead and run this now. We may be prompted to uh, provide elevation. We'll see what happens. And the uh, first thing we're going to have to do is agree to the blurb and say that we want to install. And there are some instructions on here. When you do this, make sure you read that text for the expediency of the video. We're going to skip over that and click install now here is the important part here, the installation directory. You're going to need to remember this. The default is to put this on drive C and the directory mingw. I would recommend keeping that. Uh, one thing to keep in mind here is that this these tools uh, react very poorly to being installed in any sort of location where there's spaces in the path. So don't put this in something like program files or you're probably going to have problems. And uh, we're going to leave these options just the way they are. We want to install support for the graphical user interface. That's going to give us an easier way to uh, install some tools later. We're going to say install this just for me, the current user. And we're going to say we want to have these items in the start menu and uh, on the desktop. So we're going to go ahead and click continue and it's going to download some files here and install them and we'll get on with the next part once it's done. This can take a little bit of time. Now it's all done, so we're going to go ahead and click continue on this operation. And now we have this. Now, MinGW is all about installing a particular sets of tools that you might be interested in actually using. And we're not going to cover what all of these things actually are and what you might want to use them for. We're going to leave that up to you. If you're going to need a compiler, you'll probably know about it and want to install it. For our purposes here, what we're going to install here is the base bin and we're going to mark that for installation, and we're also going to mark the GCC G++ as for installation. 
option as well. And once we're done with that, we're going to come up here and we're going to choose Apply Changes. And again, this is going to uh, download some items. Now we're going to have to go ahead and click Apply on this one. And it's going to go ahead and again download some stuff. And this could take a little bit of time. So we'll speed this up and we'll see you on the other side. It is finished now and it says all changes were applied successfully. You may now close this dialog. So I'm going to go ahead and close that and close out of this tool. And now our copy of MinGW is installed. We can move on to the next step. Here we are back in Sublime. We're going to assume that you either just finished installing MinGW or you've installed it previously. Now we're ready for the next step, which is making sure that when we try to use it in Sublime, it's actually going to work. Now, this isn't actually something that's specific to Sublime uh, per se. It's actually something that's just specific to the system in general. And here's how we test this particular thing. I'm going to use the Windows and R keys, Windows R to open that Run dialog and Run CMD, the Windows command prompt, like so. It's going to open up a prompt just like so. Now anything we type in here, this is exactly what Sublime would do on our behalf if we used shell command in a build system. And if you're unfamiliar with build systems, there is a link uh, down below to a whole playlist of videos on how build systems work. So we're not going to cover that here. But what Sub Sublime is going to try to do for us is maybe run CCC if we were trying to compile a C program. And mm, it says it's not recognized uh, It's an internal external program. Or maybe you're going to run a C++ programs, so you're going to use G plus plus, but um, that's not recognized either. This isn't uh, entirely surprising because your hard drive is a vast space full of your documents, your programs, data files for your programs, all sorts of information. If you're going to run a program like this interactively, there's you need to tell Windows where to find it and thus when Sublime tries it, Windows knows where to find it, and that is by way of your path. And this isn't something, again, that's not specific to Sublime, it's not specific to Windows, it's specific to computers in general. Even Linux and Mac OS have a concept of a path for how to look up interactive programs just like this. So if you have previously installed MinGW, but uh, it doesn't seem to work for you in Sublime, then you probably need to take this step that we're about to do here because uh, the installer for MinGW doesn't set this up for you directly. And this is why you need to know the directory in which you installed MinGW. And uh, again, we're going to use the, um, the Windows R key to open the Run dialog down here. You can also get this from the Start menu as well if you're interested in that sort of thing. Now, the default location is min C, uh, MinGW. That's the recommended default in the installer. Uh, and remember, you don't want to use spaces in this path when you install it, you're going to cause problems for yourself. So I'm going to open that. You put in this directory, in this uh, box where you installed MinGW, if it wasn't the default. And that's going to open the file browser like so. Now, if we were to look inside of this bin directory right here, we can see here's GCC and G++. These are the programs that we're actually interested in running. So this path right here, C MinGW bin, it for me is the place that has to be on the path so that all of the tools in this directory can be found by the command prompt and thus by Sublime when we're running the build. So I'm going to copy that particular um, bit of text there and we can go ahead and close that window now. Now, now we're going to need to modify the environment variables on our system. Now I'm doing this on Windows 10. How you do this on other versions of Windows will be slightly different. You might need to Google for that, but the idea remains the same. I'm going to use the Windows key and S to open the search dialog and say environment variables. And the very first best match here is edit the system environment variables. We're going to choose that particular option. This dialog pops up and we want to click this button down here labeled environment variable just like so. That opens up a whole new window here. Now on the top are user-defined variables for ODAT nerd, and on the bottom are system variables. Now the page for MinGW recommends that you only ever edit your own user variables and not system variables. So um, that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to choose the item in this list labeled path and then click edit like so. This is a list of all of the places that Windows will look for a program when you try to run it inside of the uh, command prompt or even in the run dialog. This is all the places where these things might be found. So what we're going to do is add a new line here and paste in the thing that we uh, just copied like so. And then we can say, okay, to close out of that dialog, 
dialog, OK to close out of that dialog, and OK to close out of that dialog. Now we've modified the path. You might expect this to work. And no, it doesn't. And the reason for that is the environment variables for a program are captured at the point where it's originally started. Once something's already running, changes to the environment won't be seen. So we're going to need to close this window. But if we were to run a brand new command prompt like so, now when I type GCC, it's actually found and actually executes, but it gets angry because we didn't actually provide it anything to do. And similarly, we could use G++ as well and get the same thing. So now this works in a command prompt. It will work in our Sublime Text build system. So let's go ahead and close that window and move on to step three, doing this stuff in Sublime. We have installed MinGW and we made sure that the bin folder inside of the MinGW installation directory is in the system path. That makes sure that when we ask Windows to execute one of the programs as part of MinGW or when we ask Sublime to ask Windows to execute one of them, it will actually be found and could be executed. So we can proceed on. We're going to need a couple of sampler programs. I have two. The first is this simple Hello World uh, C program and the second is a Hello World C++ program. Both of them do uh, more or less the exact same thing, slightly different message, and we're good to go. Now, in order to do something with these, we need a Sublime Text build system, which is uh, how we tell Sublime what external command to execute in order to do what we want to do. And we're not going to cover that here for a few reasons. First of all, there's a whole video series on how to create a build system and how they work and everything you might need to know. And it's linked down in the description, as I mentioned previously. Uh, secondly, this is a tutorial on how to use MinGW and Sublime Text. It's not a tutorial about how to compile and run a C++ program. And thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, Sublime comes with a build system for C and C++ built in. And I can't begin to tell you how many times I've seen people on Stack Overflow or in the forums struggling with setting up a build system to compile and run their C programs. And they really don't need to most of the time because there's one that's already built in that does exactly what you need it to do. Um, and as a matter of fact, if I was to use the build command right here in this C file, it pops up. The build system is named C single file and it has a main build and a variant. This main build at the top just compiles the current file and that's it. It doesn't run it, it just converts it into an object file. The second one compiles it and then if the compilation was successful, runs the result. So most of the time, the run variant is what you're going to want for something like this. You would really only use this other one if you wanted to verify that your code was valid, but you don't necessarily need to run it. Over here in the C++ file, the exact same thing shows that there's a C++ single file build that does exactly the same thing as the Hello C one. It just executes a different tool. So if you just have some simple C programs, you don't need to provide any special arguments to the compilers to be able to do something, uh, then uh, you are good to go right out of the box. And I'm going to go ahead and choose that, but this is not going to work. And we're seeing it is generating an error down here. And if we were to look, it says GCC is not recognized as an internal or external command operable program or batch file. What the heck? We just finished fixing that. We tested it in the command prompt. And I did this on purpose because this is one of those things that can really catch you. Remember I said when we when we set this up in the path, we had to restart the command prompt because any program that's running captures the environment that's in place at the point where it's executed. It doesn't see updates that are made while it's running. You want it to keep running in the same state that it was originally started in. So we need to quit and restart Sublime the same way that we quit and restart the command prompt to get this to work. And I did that on purpose because it's very easy to forget that step and then you think you didn't modify the path correctly and uh, things are very complicated. So I'm going to go ahead and quit out of that. This is also a good time to point out that when you install uh, MinGW, it does install this MinGW installer. I told it to put it on the desktop. I also told it to put it in the start menu. You might have it in either of those locations depending on how you set this up. If you were to run this, you'll see the exact same program that we saw when we were initially installing. This is all of the things that you could install here. And if we were to scroll this list down, there's the ones that we uh, originally installed. And you could actually, if you wanted to, mark them for removal, or you could mark other things for installation to update things. And then if you go in here and click uh, apply changes, if you actually pick some, you can get parts removed and get other parts added in. So if at any point something doesn't seem to work, perhaps you installed the C compiler only, and now you need C++ 
plus and G plus plus isn't available or uh, vice versa. You could go ahead and use these tools. So I thought I'd I just point that out there so you can keep your MinGW system up to date. And I'm going to fire this up again. And now when I run the build, and again, I'm going to choose the run variant here, and then it, Sublime will remember that uh, going forward for this particular file. Right down, it's there in the bottom of the window, it says, hello world from C, and it works perfectly. And over here in the C++ version, again, we'll do the same thing. We need to tell it the very first time to use the run variant. And there is hello world from C++. And we could even break this code if we wanted to. And the build system also has the capability to show you inline errors as well. Understandably, the C and C++ single file builds, as we've seen and used in this video, are very simplistic because the needs of people building and running programs is vastly wide. It is the simplest example of getting something running. So if your program requires any extra arguments like libraries it needs to link or extra places to look for include folders, if your program consists of one or more than one rather file, uh, then these won't work for you because you're going to need to modify the command line to compile multiple files. And if you want to run something interactive, standard builds don't support that. You need to create your own build. Now, there is a video linked down below how to create uh, make any build system interactive in Terminus. If you want to create an interactive build, that's the video to watch. If you'd like to make a build that's based off of one of these builds but make changes, that video also shows you how to create your own build system based off one. You just don't have to carry on and convert it into a Terminus uh, build system. I would say, though, that if you are starting to get more into the world of C and C++, you should really start looking at uh, dedicated tools for building and compiling uh, your programs. For example, Make, which is something that Sublime builds or has support for uh, out of the box, rather, for uh, detecting and building your program. But I leave that entirely up to you. And that uh, is going to do it for this week's lesson. I hope you enjoyed this and it was uh, helpful. Please let me know down in the comment section below if you need anything more uh, clarified. And don't forget, while you're down there, to use those buttons to thumb, subscribe, and share. Ring the bell notification icon and you will know when the next Sublime Text tutorial becomes available. And until then, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.